perspective at its most simple is simply a word to describe how something looks when we stand in a certain place looking at it. If you like, the way it looks when we view it from a certain point. And in English, we even use the word perspective to mean viewpoint in the sense of what our opinion is from our point of view about an issue. But in drawing, the perspective is quite literally the way something looks from a particular point of view. When we stand somewhere looking at it, but when we look at a building from an elevated position, almost square on to one of the sides, the shapes that we see, whether it's the overall building or various elements of the building, such as windows or towers or doors, changes if we stand in a different place to view the same building. Our viewpoint changes, the perspective changes. When we stand much closer and not square on to any of the walls, everything can look very different. The lines under the windows appear horizontal from this viewpoint, but from this viewpoint, they're at quite a strong angle. Our windows are rectangles. From this perspective, we can't even see the windows and they're certainly not rectangles. They've become parallelograms because of the angles which this viewpoint looking up causes to happen. They change shape because of the perspective. Every building is affected by where we stand when we look at it, whether it's a small, simple building or a big grand building. And how where we stand changes the appearance of a building is less if we stand a little way back and almost square on or square on to the building. But it changes the appearance of the shapes of a building much more if we're close and looking upwards, or if we're completely above something and looking downwards on it. But it's different again if we're very high, but still level with the building we're looking at, rather than looking down onto the top of it. And it's different again if we're up high but we're level with parts of the building, looking up at parts of a building, but looking down at other parts. The perspective, how it looks, changes in all these circumstances. But the good news is, is that it changes in a way we can understand, in a way that we can predict. And if we understand how it changes, then it makes it easier for us to see it when we're drawing from life or from photos. And because we can observe how buildings and other objects look because of our position, looking at them because of our perspective, it makes it easier for us then to draw them accurately. So what are these predictable aspects of how things look according to where we stand? I like to think of them in terms of patterns and because I can predict the patterns, I know what I'm looking for. It makes it easier to see and then easier to draw. Let me explain to you now, using a number of examples, the patterns that we see that change according to where we're looking at something from, according to the perspective that the building has towards us. If perspective is how something looks to us because of where we stand when we look at it, then clearly the most important thing is where our eyes are. Whether our eyes are higher or lower, whether they're square on or at an angle to the object. Now I know that if I were to stand front on to this cottage, it would be a rectangle, but it's not a rectangle here. It's a, a four-sided shape where the four angles are different because the shape of the rectangle is changed because I'm standing looking at one corner and part of it is further away than another part. And all these things change how it looks. But the important thing to work out is eye level. Now my eye level is actually slightly higher than the eye level of the person in the picture because I am standing on a higher spot of ground. My eye level when I took this is about here. And why the eye level is important is because all of the angles which a certain perspective causes all go down to the eye level because the angles that we see all meet on eye level. So every line or alignment, which would be parallel if we were looking straight on, becomes a sloping line. And if you were to keep drawing all of those lines till they met, they would all cross each other at the same point. And that point 
actually lines up with the eye level of the person looking or the camera if we're looking at a photo. And it doesn't just work as you go above eye level, it also works as you go below eye level. And if we were to line this up on the brickwork, we can see that it doesn't matter whether our lines are above eye level or below eye level, they still all join on eye level. And the pattern is that between eye level and whatever the top perspective line is, the angle increases, increases, increases. You can't have one in the middle going at a different angle. And even if we were to draw them parallel, which I often see, that's a mistake. And it's very important to work out where our eye level is because then the angle changes direction from going one way to going the other way. So let's look at this in another example. At an example of a complex architectural shape. So the first thing we need to do is to work out our eye level. The ground looks flat, but just as this person here is doing, I am standing up not as high as they are, but on a raised edge. If I was standing on the ground, then my eye level would be the same as the eye level of all these people. But I am a little bit higher. So my eye level is more like here. If we look at our perspective lines, what do we see? There are some very strong lines that if we were looking front onto this building, would be parallel horizontal lines. But from this angle, they're not horizontal and they're not parallel. They slope at an angle. If we continue those lines, again we see they all meet at a certain point. This time they meet on the picture. And it doesn't matter how high up we go, it still works in the same way. But what is clear is that the higher the lines of a building become above eye level, the greater the angle. This angle is much greater than the ones beneath it. And again, if we go below eye level and line up the balustrade railing in each of these arches, we can see they also form a perspective angle, a perspective line that joins up with all the others. But again, because it's below eye level, it goes this way. So we see it works exactly the same, whether it's a very simple cottage or whether it's the palace of a French king. And while in a drawing such as this, I would never draw them to a point and measure it that way. In my head, I know that's what's happening. And so it helps me position my lines and get my angles right. But in practice, I use my pen to measure the angle exactly onto my paper. But that's another video. In this scene, I'm standing at the top of a flight of stairs and the buildings on each side are going higher and lower than where I am. In this case, when it's not quite so obvious exactly what point my eye level is, we can actually discover it by reverse engineering. We can use one of our highest angles and one of our lowest angles and where they meet, we know that will give us a more precise idea of where eye level is. And when we do that, we can see in fact that that's what works. That when I go below this point, in fact, they align with the same point. If I was standing directly halfway between these two buildings, then the perspective angles on the left-hand side would also cross at the same point. But I'm actually, as you can see, closer to the buildings on the left than the buildings on the right. And that means my point of view of these buildings is a different point of view than I get with these buildings. Not by a lot, but enough to make a difference. So the perspective for this side, although the eye level is the same because my eye level hasn't changed, the perspective, the way the building looks because of where I stand when I look at it, changes. Now because I'm a lot closer to this building, the perspective angles are more extreme. But still, they meet up. And again, all the angles in between meet up. And it doesn't matter whether we're inside or outside. So eye level is about here. If we take our 
perspective angles, we can see that they meet. And in this scene, we have perspective angles that also go off in the other direction. Because our viewing point is more square on, more front on with this wall than the right hand wall we were just looking at, the angles are less and these lines are closer to being parallel, but they're not. We can see that they're not going to cross on our yellow line, on our eye level line, on our sheet of paper. It's going to be a very long way off. If we place the lines accurately, that certainly will happen. Even in a complicated interior scene, the same patterns form. My eyes were approximately the same level as this person's head over here. Eye level is about here, very high in the picture. Again, we see the same patterns working and that these perspective lines, the angles that the horizontal lines take because of where we're looking at it from, if we continue them all, will all meet up on our eye level. As we draw these lines that get lower and lower in our drawing, in our building, we need to keep increasing the angle for them to look right and it's exactly the same on this wall as well. Eye level stays the same of course because we haven't changed where we're looking from. But because this wall is at a greater angle to where we're looking, the perspective angles become greater. And while they don't join on our paper, they almost do. This is referred to as the vanishing point. And if you've looked at other videos teaching on perspective, you'll certainly have come across vanishing points. Usually in our scene, we don't actually see them. This drawing, for instance, is two point perspective because there are two vanishing points. There's one this direction and there's the one we looked at first for the other wall, which goes off this way. But that's not so important. When I draw a complex scene, I pay particular attention to make sure I get the extreme angles correct. Because if this angle's correct, if this angle's correct, and I make sure I know where eye level is, because eye level gives us the place where we have a horizontal line, although there may not actually be a line there, I always think of a fan when I draw with perspective. And the perspective angles are like the ribs of a fan and they have to look as if they're all going to meet up at one point, even though these spaces, of course, won't be equal. It's this pattern, this fan-like pattern, which is important to see. Perspective gives us other patterns as well. I certainly don't need to draw eye level. Sometimes you'll hear eye level talked about as the horizon, but it's not necessarily the same as where the horizon is. But I don't have to draw eye levels and vanishing points. What I have to do is to draw what I see in front of me. It's not so important that I plot where this line meets eye level, but that I get this angle correct. But what is important is to know that as these angles go above eye level, they get steeper and steeper and they can get quite steep. And that can be quite difficult to make yourself draw because I know that there is a horizontal line at eye level, it's easier to find it. And then it's easier to see that above that line, the angles increase and below that line as well, if there are any. But the important thing to remember is that all perspective is, is a way of describing how things change when where we stand looking at them changes. And far from being a problem, perspective is actually a great help to the artist because it describes what we're seeing. It tells us the patterns we should expect to see and therefore it's easier to see them and hopefully then to draw them more accurately. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I hope this has been helpful. Perspective shouldn't be the problem we often think it is. I feel like some of the perspective videos make it sound a bit overcomplicated and too theoretical and so it's hard to sometimes relate these diagrams with boxes and cubes and eye levels and, and, and vanishing points with what I'm seeing in front of me. But perspective just is a description of the way patterns are formed by lines in a structure according to where we are looking at it from, from our perspective.
from our viewpoint. Make yourself some coloured strips of cardboard and print off some pictures and play with these to really understand, as I've been doing in these examples, how the perspective angles work from different viewing points. And I'm sure then when you next go to draw a structure, you'll see those angles more clearly with more understanding and find it much easier to draw them accurately. Well, at least I hope that's the case. But be confident, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.